Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Trust and Believe. I'm your host, Sean T. And today we are going to continue to enhance your ability to trust and believe and powering through, whether it's the new year or just powering through your life. I'm going to talk about a lot of topics today that hopefully will, number one, spark interest, maybe light some fuel to your fire, put a spark in your booty so that you can continue to believe in who you are and know that whatever you're going through, you can power through and you can really believe in the process that you need to take in order to get to the next level of who you are. Get ready to trust and believe. Somebody say it again. No, no, no. What's up? You're better than Oprah. Come on, y'all. This is Sean T and it's time to trust and believe. All right, so let me tell y'all something. I got on a video conference call with my therapist yesterday, and I usually go into therapy. Y'all know I love driving to therapy. I love processing it in my head. I love parking my car. And what I really love is that my therapist really gets my personality, and I really like sitting in the room with him. Uh, But yesterday, I wasn't able to do that because I was really going through it with this cold that I have at this current time. And I was sneezing and whatever. And I did message him beforehand. I was like, you know, can we do it outside? But then it was raining. So anyway, I opted for a video call. But I was really excited to do that. And the reason why is because I was thinking as I was going through my therapy session, one of the things that I really want to focus on, and I probably touch on in some way, shape, or form through every podcast episode here, is just about mental health. And I think that is the foundation, that is the fuel, that is the thing that I believe that we all need to build. When I talk about mental fitness, we all need to build that in order to continue to push through and to get stronger. I was actually working on my trainer yesterday and I'm doing these leg exercises and I'm doing leg press and I'm doing leg extensions. And it gets literally to the point where my range of motion is so shortened. And I'm big on range of motion and like, you got to get full range of motion. She was like, well, just do what you can do. And I am burning. And I'm like, who in the do you think you are? And she's just like, just do it. Like, she does not give me anything. I try to make her laugh in the middle of the set, nothing. And I was just thinking to myself, oh, this is the process that I need to take mentally to really kind of push through. And then I stood up from a set and there were a couple of people around and they were like laughing at me because people love seeing Sean T die at the gym. And one guy was like, you got that tattoo on your side that says dig deeper. And I'm like, oh, you're really funny. <laughs> but anyway, so then I just thought like the only way I'm able to push through these exercises, the only way I'm able to push through wanting to actually go to therapy is knowing who I am, believing in who I am and really strengthening what I like to call that mental muscle. When you talk about New Year's resolutions, if you're somebody who puts up a vision board or, you know, there are people out there who actually are like, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. And one of my friends posted, you know, it's just another day. And I also understand that concept too. However, there are a lot of you out there that need a restart and a reset. You need to come out the blocks. And I've also said in the past, like, oh, why do you need a New Year's resolution? Like, just it's your life and continue through. But with all due respect, some of us really effed up last year. <laughs> Let's all kind of get on the same playing field. In 2020, we were all effed up. Like in 2020, like the world was like, nope, I don't care how fly you are. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care how much you're struggling. I don't care how much you got it together. I don't care how good or bad your relationship is. I'm putting everybody through a challenge. And we all came out of 2020 thinking that 2021 was going to be different. People were literally celebrating the fact that like, oh my gosh, 2020 is over. I still think I'm feeling a little bit of effects of 2020. And I think we all are because every time you get a cold, you're like, oh my God, what is that? You're like, should I run and get this test? I know it's a, it's a controversial subject, but it is what it is. I mean, it really messed with us mentally and emotionally. And everybody was like, I want to get out of here. So I do understand your desire to want to get out of this process of whatever you went through last year that's just not necessarily working for you. And so if you don't believe in New Year's resolutions, I kind of want you to think about it that way as I talk about this. 
So you wake up, you do everything you got to do. And if you drive to work, you get in your car in the morning, you start your car and you go. And the first thing you do, whether you are going to the same place or not, you process what is the traffic going to be like? Me specifically, I have three ways to get to the gym. It's the first place I drive to in the morning. I can take an L shape that's like super, super quick or not super quick, but it's efficient. But, you know, sometimes there's a lot of traffic or sometimes they're doing construction. So then there's a second way I can take where I can do like kind of a zigzag because I know that there's another street that's going to have a lot of traffic. So I feel like it's kind of a back way. And then there's another way where I literally do a reverse of the other way, depending on what the traffic is like. I say all that to say the reason why it's really good for you to try to have a reset or a restart is because you really want to navigate through the traffic that's about to happen in your life. One thing that we do know when we enter a new year, for the most part, some people have a nine to five job and they kind of know exactly what the year is going to be like. They know they, they may have gotten a review or getting a review. And so they have a new focus. You kind of have a landscape of what it is that you want to do or where it is that you want to go. This is why I kind of love the idea of people having New Year's resolutions because it really helps you plan the traffic. It really helps you plan the route. Now, you also, like I talk about in my book, Tears of Transformation, I also talk about being flexible, which is why I definitely have different routes to the gym. Because if I'm running a little late, if there's something happening on this route, I can kind of maneuver my way and say, all right, there's another way I can go. And so I really want you to think about as you start to go through your year this year, instead of just coming up with a new year's resolution saying like, I'm going to make more money or I'm going to get fit or, you know, I'm going to make my relationship better, which all those things we're going to talk about in a little bit. Instead of just saying that, think about what happened last year or in the past that really maybe caused the traffic jam in that part of your life. And so what are the different routes that you are going to be able to take to maneuver your way through the traffic so that this year you actually can reflect on last year, use the strength that you gained last year. I don't even know if it's just making it a little bit easier, but like I like to use the word manageable and it really helps you stay focused so that you can literally do the best that you can do with what you know is going to happen. And then again, when I talk about the flexibility thing, you never know what's going to happen. I go back to 2020. We didn't know when we entered 2020 that a crazy pandemic was going to happen, right? Everybody had to be flexible. People had to stay home. This might sound a little shallow, but I was like so mad when I had to stop playing tennis. It's only because like it was a major part of my day. I spent two hours doing it and it was my mental release. And then when they closed the courts, I was mad, right? Or people lost people in their lives. There are so many things that you don't know was going to happen. So you also, in a way, not think negatively, but... By having a New Year's resolution, knowing that this is the traffic and this is the route, you kind of have to also be ready and expect the unexpected, which is kind of like why I like that show Big Brother so much. Julie Chen, if you're watching or listening, I posted on Twitter a couple of days ago that I really want to be on Celebrity Big Brother one day. This is my ploy. I'm using my platform to get to Julie Chen. Julie, I was on the talk a few times. We worked out together. Get me on it. Anyway, I say all that to say being able to expect the unexpected. And it's not saying I'm going to focus on the negative, but you kind of do have to be flexible. And you have to be flexible if really great things happen. You might get a raise or make even more money or a new job opportunity comes about or you get pregnant and you're like, oh my gosh, like these are also really great things that you have to be flexible about too. Being flexible is not just the negative things. So I say all that to say, if you're planning for a new year, kind of reflect on all those things I just talked about, just so that you are ready and you have an unplanned plan of attack, if you will. It's just like always being ready. It's not just about having one goal. It's about Having different goals, but also knowing that you have the focus to get where it is that you want to go and you can maneuver your way through the traffic. The one thing I want to talk about that a lot of people have done, especially when that book, The Secret, came out, is vision boards. I'm going to be a little bit more strict in my talking here. I'm going to tell you things that I do like about vision boards. I think that if you are able to look at the vision board every day and it just doesn't become another wall piece in your house, it keeps you focused. It keeps your eye on the prize. I think people who are super consistent, like somebody like Scott, who 
has a daily routine. I go to the gym every day. That's about the only routine thing. I don't know when I'm going to twerk. I don't know when I'm going to take a, a thirst trap photo. Even when I go to the gym to do workout on my own without my trainer, I know I'm going to do buys and tries, but I might get to the gym and be like, mm, I kind of want to work on like thickening my biceps and not just lengthening my biceps. Like I'm not that kind of person. You know, I brush my teeth at different times during the day. I'm not a routine kind of person. I'm more of like a free spirit, but Scott is. So there are people out there who have that vision board that can walk by that vision board and say, I'm going to look at this vision board. I'm going to study it and go. If you're somebody who is not that person, a vision board might not be for you. You might want to have someone text you every morning, like something that's a little bit more integrated in your day so that it's more activity-based and not just looking at that. So that's one thing. If you are a super consistent person that does the same thing day in and day out, and that's your routine, that's great. Like a vision board, I think would work really, really well for you. But if you're not, it might not work that well for you. For me, I set alarms on my phone. I send myself text messages. I send myself so many text messages. I love so many articles that I want to read or podcasts I want to listen to or reminders that I have. I text friends and I'm like, hey, like remind me about this. It's also another way to have the vision to keep the focus. Some people talk about health and fitness. If you like put a body on a vision board, I'm like, okay, like I get it. But I'm not a fan of putting... Like if you're a guy or maybe even a girl, like don't put my photo on your vision board unless you want to do my workouts every day. <laughs> then you can put me on your vision board. But when it comes to body, like this is the body that I want. Don't put somebody else's body on there. I'd rather you put, I love my body. I'm going to work on my body. I'm going to push my body. I'm going to be consistent. I'd rather you put words about how you're going to get that body by creating words that help you create the vision, that help you create action, take action. Because if you just put the old school sports illustrated model or your favorite Instagram model or whatever fitness person on there, you're aspiring to be something that you will never be. Now, there is a rebuttal for that. People might be like, oh, but they make me motivated and they have big arms and they have big shoulders. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying like for your psyche, even if you put someone else's picture up there, put the things that you want for you that separate you from that person. So anyway, I say that with vision boards, be really careful about how you visualize or put things on that vision board. And I'm just a huge proponent of challenging yourself with the vision board with words, because those words will make it very specific to you. It will make it very unique to you. And it will spark for you to make decisions to do what it is that you want to do. So we're going to move on from here. Got that vision board, got that New Year's resolution situation down. The next thing that I want to talk about, like you can have this vision board, you can have this New Year's resolution, you can have your reset and your restart, you can have the traffic pattern. But if you're not prioritizing yourself, none of this is going to happen. It's literally not going to happen. If Even if by chance something great happens, if you're not prioritizing yourself, prioritizing your mental health, prioritizing you as a human, then you're not going to be able to fully reap the benefits of what it is that you're going after. Being positively selfish and prioritizing yourself is one of the greatest things you can do for your entire life. Now, I'm not saying if you only have two chicken fingers left and your five-year-old is hungry to be like, sorry about you, bruh. I haven't eaten all day. Like, yeah, give your five-year-old the food. But I'm talking about life-altering things. And again, I always talk about the mental space. Like, if mentally you're not in a good place, you have to prioritize yourself so that mentally you're in a good space, so that everything you do and all the good feels that you have I've said this a million times, but everyone else can feel it in addition to you because the greatness that you feel is magnified by a hundred by other people. For example, I was so tired today. When I went to this gym, I'm like, you know what, Sean, go in here and mind your business and work out. Did you really think that happened? I know so many people. I'll be talking. I'll be walking up to people saying hello, but that today I... I only said hi to a couple people and I had people come up like, Hey, you know, is everything okay? <laughs> and you know, the thing is like, I'm tired. I'm like, I forgot my AirPods. I have a cold. 
I'm here. And so that's just a, a prime example of people will read your energy. Like, even if you're like, oh, I'm happy, I'm fine. People are going to read your energy. It's going to come out. You can't fake that positive energy. And so today, I was just like really honest. I was like, I'm just so tired. I'm just going to go up here on the treadmill to warm up. Then I did my workout for body. I practiced it. I felt a little bit better. I met someone. And then when I was leaving, my buddy was like, hope you feel better today. Your energy's kind of low. And I appreciated it because I'm like, thanks for not like making me feel horrible. But they were just like acknowledging. But for me, if I don't put myself first and if I don't do things that I need to do, I am exhausted. Even when I was about to walk in here to do my podcast, I saw Chip and Ellie getting out the car. They're like, how are you? I'm like, I'm tired. Ugh, I'm just tired. And I think that prioritizing yourself as I'm talking about this is also being honest. Because if you are not at your top and people say, you know, how are you feeling? You say, oh, I'm fine. By faking your way through it, number one, it's not beneficial to you because you know how you feel. So you're basically lying to yourself. And then for those people who really care about you, if they know how you feel, they have the opportunity to help. And that is also a part of prioritizing yourself. So when we talk about prioritizing yourself, it's not just saying like, you know, it's me versus me. You know, people are like, iron sharpens iron. They say all this crazy stuff, but I'm like, but you really don't put yourself first. Like you're doing that to show off or showcase for other people. But are you really putting yourself first? Are you taking those hard steps to be honest with yourself, to be like, yo, I really need to make this really tough decision to do it for me. I think most of the time I'll ask people on my team, like, hey, if you want to do this, if you don't enjoy it, let me know. Because I'd rather people do things that bring them joy, as much joy as they can have, because it's going to thrive. Because the minute you start doing things that you don't want to do, or you start doing too much for people that don't give you in return, then the energy starts to just really turn into a tornado. So being honest with yourself is probably the first thing you should do when it comes to prioritizing your year. Being honest with yourself, being honest with your emotions. The most important thing when it comes to prioritizing yourself, and a lot of people feel this, is not feeling guilty about who you are or what you want to do or where you want to go in your life because it's your life and making decisions that are going to make you better. I think my Instagram algorithm knows me pretty well, except for my For You page. When I'm scrolling through reels and things like that, I really get a lot of motivational. I come across Mel Robbins a lot, even though I follow her. I come across people that are giving like these really powerful quotes. And a lot of it is just not feeling guilty about who you are. And you all know that I'm a big fan of prioritizing your true and most authentic self. So if you are out there and you're like, yo, like I really want to do this and it's not going to put you out and not be able to make you pay your bills. Or some people do take big leaps and jumps. I say you have to go for what it is that you want to do. And there are people out there and most of the time it's your family that's going to make you feel really guilty for prioritizing who you are. And most of the time that feeling of guilt that they put on you comes from jealousy. We only have one life here. If you really want to make your year better, prioritizing who you are, being authentic to who you are, being authentic to your emotions, being honest with the people around you, most importantly, being honest with yourself is going to make those New Year's resolutions not just better, but it's also going to make that better. It's going to make that vision board, if you have one, it's going to give you so much clarity so much confidence in what it is that you want to do and what you want to go after. Oh my goodness. And I think that there are a lot of people out there who are people pleasers. And so if you're a people pleaser, you tend to really feel guilty about what it is that you want to do because you want to make everybody else happy. And so my thing is, I totally understand the people pleaser mentality of making other people happy. But if everybody's having a good ass time at the party and you're miserable as hell, then why'd you show up to the party? Like, why should everybody else have fun, but not you? And so if someone else is going to get mad because you're prioritizing yourself because you're having fun and they are capable of doing a lot of things for themselves, then maybe they're just not your people. Maybe that's a whole other podcast. But I'm just saying, prioritize yourself, prioritize your life. Don't feel guilty for who you are or what it is that you want to do or where you want to go. While I know a lot of people believe in heaven and the afterlife and maybe reincarnation to each his own when it comes to religion. I'm a big believer in, listen, 
I'm only here once, at least in this body. Like if I come back as a dog or a plant or a, a lion, cool. You know what I mean? But for now, I'm a human. For now, I'm Sean T. For now, I just want to go out here and have a good ass time. And at 44 and a half years old, I feel better and more free than ever. And I want to make that thrive. And I want to help you thrive as you go along the way through what it is that you want your life to be. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this next topic, and that is starting over in your health and wellness. Because we talk a lot about fitness and health, but I don't want to spend too much time here. I just want to be very blunt with this. Tough trainer alert. Beep, beep, beep. Listen, if you've already been through a piece or a part of your journey, or if you've already lost like 10 to 15 pounds, if you've been through a point where you've already committed to something, your fitness, your food, your wellness, you lost weight, you have felt those endorphins, and now it's 2023 and you're starting over. Why are you starting over? Why'd you stop in the first place? Because a lot of people are like, you know, I said this before, I fell off the wagon. I always say, the wagon is a child's game. Why are you falling off the wagon? Get on your train or get in your car or take your steps and you go for it. Now, I totally understand, like, if mental things happen, a death in a family, you get sick or you get injured, these things are not excuses. These things are reasons. And I'm totally fine with you having to reset because of a reason. But I'm not fine with you resetting and restarting because of excuses. Oh, I went on vacation and I had too many drinks and I had fries. I'm like seven days of having fries and drinks does not mean you have to put everything down the drain and restart because a lot of you do that and it's not even necessary while mentally is it is tough for me too but i could just not work out for two weeks still eat what i normally eat and i'm still going to be fine i'm not gaining 15 pounds so when you say i'm restarting my wellness and my fitness journey it's because you made a choice to jump off the wagon if you didn't have those other things those reasons because there's a definite difference between excuses and reasons holiday parties that you went to are excuses a couple drinks you know what i'm saying i'm here for and i'm not all about like burning off what you ate last night but your consistency over the time that you're doing something you can still enjoy the holiday parties so anyway i'm not trying to be rude or insincere. I'm not trying to be not empathetic to what it is that you're going through in your life by way of your health and fitness journey, but I'm just like so annoyed when I hear a lot of people say I'm restarting. And a lot of people restart a lot. Now, if you're somebody you're like, you know what I mean? I lost my 30, fell back into my old ways, but I know what to do. I'm gonna push through. But if you lost 20 and then you gained 20 and then you lost 20 and then you gained 20, it's not about the weight. It's not about the weight. It's not about the food. It is about something going on up here. And that's why I say there's something else. There's something else there. And that's why I talk about in the beginning, mental health. Our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. There's so many different things and opportunities and tools you can use to work through that. Another one of our sponsors, Noom, which is really amazing because one of the things about Noom when you go through their journey is they literally let you control the journey and what it is that you want so you feel free. Because a lot of people out there do not feel free when they're going through their health and fitness journey because of what I was talking about before, because of those vision boards, but because of what you see on Instagram and like how you see these filters on people and how you see people edit their photos and you're just thinking like, but I just want to look like X. And I'm like, consistency. I started a new fitness journey in April and along the way, I was like really, really happy, really, really happy. I'm just like, oh my gosh, it's so fun. I'm happier now than ever with my relationship with food and my relationship with fitness. I'm eating. I remember I used to get up. I was like, all right, I'm gonna eat a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Now I get up. I eat some oatmeal. I eat two scoops of protein. I eat a banana, some blueberries. I'm like living my best life in my belly. The whole point of what I'm trying to say is the yo-yo thing, the gaining and losing, the gaining and losing, 
if you're constantly doing that and you have success at losing 20 pounds and you have success at losing 40, if that's what you want to do, but more importantly than the number and the scale, you have built the success of being able to be consistent. And there's a reason why you're not being consistent. And I think that's what you really need to mentally focus on. And like I said, better helps with the mental space. Noom really helps you dive into just kind of like the food and what it is that you want to do and how you want to go about your own process so that you are in control. All right. I'm going to switch gears for a second because this is something that is near and dear to my heart. So I have a friend that we just send voice memos back and forth to each other probably three or four times a week. And before she would say, I'm so sorry to send you these voice memos. I feel like a downer because a lot of them are like emotionally draining and stimulating for her. And I'm like, you know, while I love happy messages from friends and I hear that everything's going well, I equally love when people are going through challenges because my Enneagram is a challenger. I don't know if you've ever done an Enneagram, but my Enneagram, my, my first thing is a challenger. And my second thing is a, a challenger and I think a helper. I think those are my first two things. So I love the combination of that. Anyway, I still had it to say, we exchange voice memos and a lot of it is about emotions. And one of the things she says all the time is I just feel so guilty with when I make a decision. And if I'm upset about something because somebody made me upset, I feel guilty about my own emotions. And I'm like, our emotions are there for a reason. Foundationally, we have hormones in our bodies that cause these emotions. And so by you, one, throwing away your emotions, you're kind of throwing away a huge portion of how you're made up, you know, the scientific way that we are made up. It's like stress happens. And so there's fight and there's flight. Some people like try to hide or they feel guilty. It's kind of like a flight thing. It's like, oh my gosh, I want to get away from this. I feel bad about how I feel. But as you're going through this year, you have to be able to, I like to say, live in the emotion. Don't let it control you. Like my father-in-law said, avoid emotion commotion. And I've said this before. I'm like, I get it. I, I agree with him a lot, but I also like to cry. So I'm like, I love that commotion that happens when the tears come out. Cause you know, as a man, personally, a lot of men are like, don't cry, like be hard, you know, man up. And I'm just like, that stifles our growth, I believe. And I think that whether you're a male or female, when you are a person that are afraid of your emotions or you're, you're upset that you got upset, you're stifling your growth. You're stifling your emotion. You're, you're actually stifling your clarity to understand why you feel bad in the first place. So as you are going through this year and you do reach those trials, those tribulations, those of the negative variety, like be okay with it because people aren't happy all the time. Just at the end of last year, most of us know Twitch passed away by suicide. And we don't know. Like a lot of people, I mean, maybe his family knows now. I'm not sure. But majority of us look at him like as a smiling human. And we're like, oh my gosh, he's smiling. Oh my gosh, he's so happy. And a lot of you out there are afraid of your emotions. You're afraid to show when you're not doing well. That's why like, if you ask me how you're doing, I'm like, do you really want to know? I say that a lot. I'm like, do you want to know how I'm doing? Because today might not be the day you're ready for it. Because I think a lot of times we expect people to be like, oh, I'm good. And we are expected to say, oh, I'm good. When a lot of times I would say the majority of people around here, like, I'm doing okay today, but this is some effed up mess that's going on in my life. And so if you ask somebody how you're doing and you don't really have time, if they say I'm not doing well, just say, you know, I, I hope the rest of your day is really great. Or I hope the rest of your day gets better. That eliminates the question of how are you doing, you know? So then you don't get roped into feeling really horrible about what it is or exactly how you feel. I say all that to say, stop getting upset that you're upset. You're allowed to be upset. But I do want to flip that and say, you're also allowed to be really happy. Because a lot of people hide their happiness because they don't want other people to feel bad for being sad. You know, if I'm not having a good day, and any of my friends either text me or call me that they're having a good day, 
the first thing I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Like, I needed that good news. I'm like, great. Like, I want to, you know, release some endorphins of happiness so that I can actually understand and like feel good with somebody else. It's not just negative emotions or getting upset. You should also be allowed to be happy and surround yourself with people that celebrate your happiness. And I think one of the things, like for those of you out there who are married or maybe you have roommates or you live with people and maybe the day is long and, you know, maybe some days you're going to go through this year and they're just not going to be great, right? Talk with your spouse or your roommates or whatever, like your process. If it's that you need alone time to, to regroup before you come home and get involved, have that alone time. Scott knows. I'm like, listen, I'm like, I'm going to get a massage. Like, cause that's my time to meditate. And if he wants to do something, if he wants to go, you know, watch RuPaul's Drag Race or whatever. I mean, I created a bathroom with a TV in there. I've never seen him in there for pretty long, but I'm hoping he uses it. But he likes RuPaul's Drag Race. You know, he goes into the laundry room. Yes, he, he goes into the laundry room, watches RuPaul's Drag Race on his phone. But I really condone having your time at the end of the day so that you can, you know, kind of regroup before you just come back into relationship life. I try to schedule my day so that I really am regroup because, you know, we have to come home at five o'clock. And sometimes we come back at five o'clock and Scott needs to do something or I need to do something. And one of us would take away the kids. You kind of have to work as a team. So while I want you to go through your emotions of, you know, sometimes you're upset, I want you to go through the emotions of sometimes you're really happy. I also want you to be able to manage your emotions this year. Find these things, people, places, a class. You know, Chip is now teaching again. If you guys don't know Chip, Chip Hoffa, if you're new to the podcast, he's, you know, just go follow him or just watch my stories or something. You'll see him all the time. You know, he's teaching spinning and he's teaching, well, cycling. I don't want to call it spinning. And I hear his class is really hard. And he teaches insanity. I'm like, good for you. You know, like we have to start to make these decisions that are going to, do something that makes you feel good. And it will maybe also help with the fact that you are having these places of, you know, negative emotions. All right. Next thing I want to talk about two more things. One, this deals with relationships, interpersonal relationships, meaning like your spouse, your work, your life, or, you know, just in general, trust. Obviously this podcast is called Trust and Believe, but I'm going to tell you right now, honesty and trust go hand in hand. They just go hand in hand. You know, there are people out there that are literally pathological liars and they lie because it makes themselves feel good. And they lie like that because whatever it is they're going through in their life, they don't trust that they can actually do it a lot of times. And so being honest with yourself, being honest with your friends, being honest with your spouse, while the result sometimes can be catastrophic because it just causes turmoil. I promise that that honesty goes way, way further than you lying and hiding. Prime example, I don't know why I always, if, if me and Scott talk, it always happens to be in the bathroom. Our bathroom's pretty big and it's nice in there. It's bright. So maybe that's a good place that we have these conversations. But this morning I was like, I sent him a message. I thought he was in here working, but I was like, hey, can you come in the bathroom? We had to have a conversation. And the conversation didn't start off the best. Emotions were heightened from the way that I felt and how I had to approach him about what we needed to talk about. But in its honesty and being honest with our individual emotions and being able to talk about it, it turned out to be incredibly good. You have to trust that a person is being honest, which is really hard sometimes when you're arguing with somebody. You're like, "Mm -mm, mm -mm, nope, I don't believe you. Nope. You know, (laughs) some people do that. But if you're honest with yourself, that's what you practice more than anything. Obviously, I want you to be honest with other people. But the more you practice the honesty with yourself and how you feel and your emotions, what you want to do with your life, the more you're able to practice yourself and believe in what you want and how you want to do it and believe that that is authentically you, the easier it is it's going to be for other people. Because a lot of people lie to other people because they want to make themselves look better. Or some people lie to other people because they want sympathy because of a mental health situation that they haven't dealt with as a kid, which is another very long podcast as well. Our friends and us, we were all watching White Lotus and some of us had watched it before. And it was so crazy in both seasons of White Lotus and how people literally lie 
or they're just not honest. And I don't want to go super, super deep because if you haven't watched White Lotus, I don't want to ruin it for you. But I'm just a big believer in if someone asks you a question, even if that shit is like, oh my gosh, this person is going to be upset or, or this is going to cause turmoil because the truth is what it is, just tell the truth. Now, if you're in an abusive relationship and it's dangerous, like there are definitely some circumstances in which you might want to find safety before you even talk to that person. I'm talking about in general, people who are thinking straight conversations. Like if someone comes to you, is like, hey, you know, I want to talk to you. I'm big on a preface. Hey, what I have to talk to you about might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I really want to make this situation better. Like I was saying in White Lotus, like, it, like people just lie. Like it is so insane. They either lie or give half truths. And so if you only give half the truth, either to yourself or to other people, then what do you have to do with the other half? You have to assume you know the answer. If you get asked a question or someone asks you a question, just tell the truth. Through trust comes honesty. Last thing I want to talk about today is, you know, a lot of people are going to be going through this year and I'm going to close this out with the more mental health. Just like a lot of people ask me, you know, how did you get to where you got to knowing you went through all like sexual trauma, living with an alcoholic, leaving your house at 14, being in the church. You know, we had an episode on theology and, and how the church and its teaching, you know, really kind of damaged me and like really enhanced my fear of death. And a lot of people are like, you know, how did you get to where you are? Foundationally, being aware, obviously, I'm going to say, I'm on my third therapist in my life, which is amazing. But most important is I'm not a sit down person that meditates like this. Many times throughout the week, I process what it is that I want. Why am I acting the way that I'm acting? Why am I having these conversations with myself? Why do I feel that way? I have a support system that I can go to. Like, I would say everybody that's close to me in my life, like, I feel like I can go to and be like, hey, you know, I have this going on. But a lot of people don't have that. That's not the best. But the way I was able to maneuver and navigate and come to this place in my life where I have, I'm going to say 93% happiness because nobody's happy all the time. It just came from being able to talk, again, being honest with myself, like we just talked about, but also just not being afraid to dive into the things that have made me feel bad before so that I can work my way through it to feel better, feel great where I am. So I just encourage you out there to really try to know who you are. That's also going to come tenfold back to how we started. You know, what do you want this year to be like for you? Like, what is the traffic like? Do you have multiple ways of getting to where it is that you want to go? Do you have trust? Do you have honesty with yourself? Are you restarting or resetting? Are you using excuses or do you have reasons? Like all of these things that we chatted about today will totally make you better if you really just find a way to process it and ultimately have a support group or a therapist or both. Anyway, I am so happy. And I'll say again, you're awesome. And I do have the audiobook for my Trust and Believe where I'm the voice. So if you listen to my podcast every week, then you must love my voice, even though it was a very, 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 very tough undertaking. And if I write another book, I'm going to do my audiobook a little different than I did the last one. That's neither here nor there. Anyway, thank you for listening to Trust and Believe. I hope you guys have time to leave a review. Go follow our Instagram page, Trust and Believe Pod. Engage and share. And I'll also post the podcast stuff on my social media. So if you listen to the podcast, you know, go and comment. And we'd love to hear your thoughts. And it also helps other people Know that we are here and know that we are trying to inspire you every day to continue to trust and believe in who you are.